When most students first see the equation for Poissouille's law, they want to close their eyes, turn their heads, shut the textbook, and walk away. Although the equation looks very complicated, we can simplify it by removing the variables that are not relevant when applied to the bronchial airways. These variables are the length of the airways and the viscosity of the gas. We can also remove the constants eight and pi. Therefore, the equation for flow can be simplified to this. When solving the equation for flow, the pressure applied to the airways is held constant. Under this condition, an increase in the radius of the airway will cause flow to increase. A decrease in the radius of the airway will cause flow to decrease. We know this because P, pressure, and the radius of the airway, R to the 4, are on the top of the equation, which means they are directly related to flow. As respiratory therapists, why do we care about these relationships? To give you an example, our patients with asthma who have narrowed airways may have a severely decreased airflow. This can impair the ability of their lungs to have normal gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. We give them bronchodilators such as albuterol to increase the radius of their airways, which you now know will increase airflow by virtue of this law. We can now rearrange the formula to solve for pressure. When solving the equation for pressure, the flow applied to the airways is held constant. Under this condition, a decrease in the radius of the airway will require a higher pressure in order to maintain the same airflow. An increase in the radius of the airway will require less pressure to maintain the same airflow. We know this because pressure, P, is on top, and the radius of the airway, R to the 4, is on the bottom of the equation, which means they are inversely related. So as the radius of the airway decreases, higher pressure will be needed to maintain adequate airflow. As respiratory therapists, why do we care about these relationships? For example, individuals with asthma or emphysema may have severe bronchoconstriction. Since the law tells us that as the radius decreases, higher pressures are needed to maintain adequate airflow. This reduction in airway radius makes it difficult to provide mechanical ventilation for these patients. The high pressure can result in damage to the lung or cause a pneumothorax, which was discussed in the last unit. To summarize, as respiratory therapists, this equation influences our patients' care because those who have a significant reduction in the radius of their airways will require treatment from us to improve airflow and return them to a normal state of health. Be sure to work the practice problems that I've posted in Blackboard, and please feel free to contact me with any further questions you may have.